I think West suited me when I went there, you know, I was only uh, 18 or 19, my dad is close to 19 years old, and um, I'd like to give a big shout out to the Hoodoo Gurus who have given us permission to use part of their song, That's My Team, as our new podcast episode intro for all of their music. And whenever they are going live or performing live, head to their Facebook and their Instagram. The links will be in the description below. Be sure to give them a like and a follow as well on Facebook and Instagram. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Final Tackle Podcast and this is again Western Suburbs Week and we are joined by honestly one of the hardest men to ever play the game. His name is Les Boyd. Thank you very much for joining us here today, mate. Not a problem at all. Right, so I mean I figure let's go with the first um, obvious one, your, your time with Western Suburbs. You got your debut in 1976. Um, yes. What was it like going from the grassroots town of Ningen? Um, all the way into the NSWRL. Yeah, it was a bit, bit of an experience, and I was only about a late eighteen. And uh, I came, I actually came from Ninga to Kilda in nineteen seventy-three. Okay. After the okay. after the Australian Schoolboys um, tour, oh, I was lucky enough to make that, and, and went on that, and then came to Kilda Munda for two, uh, three years, and went down to West in nineteen seventy-six. You know, you sort of go from the situation of. Uh, you know, sitting back on a Saturday afternoon and listening to the ABC game of the round to, to suddenly being involved in it, you know, and it is a, it is quite, uh, quite a scary thing, really, you know, to, to sort of do that because I actually only flew down on the Thursday morning and trained Thursday night and did play in the first game of the competition in 76, uh, the ABC game of the round against, uh, Eastern Suburbs. And, uh, it was a little bit daunting, actually, as a young bloke, just sort of being thrown straight in like that. Yeah, no, that's fair. Mm. That's fair, because mm. um, mm. by by all accounts, you weren't the biggest bloke on the field, sort of thing. Like looking back on footage and whatnot, um, so nah. it definitely would have been a bit intimidating and stuff for you as well. Um, and yeah. obviously, you were you got your um, start in Western Suburbs when it was um, the uh, ultimate ultimate time when it was the Fibros versus the Silver Tails. Um, what are your thoughts on that narrative in particular? Well, that, that developed a little bit after I got there, you know. I mean, when I first went to Western 76, um, I, I, my coach at that time was Donny Parrish. Yep. Um, and it wasn't sort of around the five row silver tails. And Keith Holman come along in 77, and then Roy Masters in 78. And Roy was the one that developed this culture of um, five rows and silver tails. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it was a uh, very smart man, Roy Masters, extremely smart, you know, and uh, he used that to motivate a lot of the players. I mean, you know, the, probably the top clubs in them days were the Manleys and the, and the Roosters and Souths and, and things like that that were sort of the ones that had been the most dominant clubs in the, in the competition, you know, and uh, and West were always considered probably one of the poor relations and... Uh, he used that to his advantage, you know, and um, and he, he motivated the players to, to believing that um, you know a lot of things were against them, and uh, you know it was it was quite a different, it was a very smart tactic by Roy, and uh, you know and the players did believe in it and played for, and played for him and played for Western Suburbs. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and also talking about your time in the NSWRL, you also went to you more or less you could say around the time the rivals, which were Manly. You played for them in the 1980s. What was it like going over to Manly, and also the differences in the culture around Manly compared to Western Suburbs? Yeah, they were two completely different clubs. Um, you know, I think West suited me when I went there. You know, I was only um, eighteen or nineteen. My dad is close to nineteen years old. Yep. And um, they had a lot of uh, unmarried young blokes that were sort of, um, you know, uh, John Donnelly's and, and, and Gary Walsh's and blokes like this were all, um, you know, part of the club and sort of young and, and like to enjoy themselves. And then when I went to Manly, you know, they were a lot more settled club and I'd had, I got married in 1978. And when um, I went there, you know, with my wife and, and that, it was a, a sort of different club and that culture. A lot of the blokes were the same. They were people with children and young families. And they were sort of two completely different clubs, you know. And uh, look, I, I, I couldn't say a bad word about either club. They were both unbelievable people, you know. But I think you make your own friends and, 
and you sort people out very quickly. And I, you know, and I, I don't think I really ever played with a bad person near the, any of the clubs, and and enjoyed both clubs. And I think that they suited different sort of parts of my lifestyle. You know. Yeah, no, that's totally fair. Um, and that sounds really wonderful that, as you said, like your time, by the end of your time at um, Western Suburbs, it was more or less, you could say, a welcome change to Manly given how they were, you know, family men, married and all that stuff at Manly. Yeah. Um, and speaking of, obviously, your time in representative footy for Australia, New South Wales, country, city, etc. What was that like mm-hmm. getting the call up for Australia and New South Wales, etc.? Well, well, I played for Australia before I played for New South Wales. Um, oh, wow. It was, uh, yeah, I picked up a 78 kangaroo tour. You know, um, I was only probably, I think I'm only 20 or 21, 20 or 21. You know, so I was only fairly young. And uh, I was. I can still remember the night that it happened. The team was named we were at Concord RSL Club on a Sunday night after, uh, I think it was about the last game of the season. The second one might have been a semi-final. And um, well, then someone came and told us that, uh, told me that I'd been picked, and Tommy had been picked as well. Tommy had done, I guess. Yep. Um, it was quite. I don't think you realise at, at that stage what you've achieved. You know, I think uh, you look back later on, things mean a lot more to you later on than they did then. You yeah, know, like back uh, then, did it feel like more part and parcel of the of the job sort of thing? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's um, you look back later on and think. Uh, you know, to represent your country in anything is, is, is a great achievement, and, and, you, and to do that when you when you when you first get picked, you think you're excited and it's great, it's tremendous, but you don't realise that later on what you've actually until later on what you've actually achieved. You know, it's uh, um, it's yeah, it's a bit uh, a bit unreal, but it's a bit, it was an unbelievable uh, experience to be, to be picked to go on the seventy eight kangaroo tour. Yeah, you know that's mm. fair enough, um, and obviously. Addressing the elephant in the room was your um, jaw-breaking incident with Daryl Broman. Um, what was the, um, you know, vibe in that game? You know, um, if you could tell us about the man behind the moment, sort of thing. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I got picked to play. Well, I got picked to play in the first grade of Origin, actually, and uh, and in them days, uh, that was the first one they'd noted that that playing and, and people playing State of Origin. I'd already played state football before that, um, but this was the first state of origin. And, yep. and I actually pulled out. I, I told them that I had a crook shoulder because we were we were playing a lot of games at that stage. And, um, you know, it was sort of just uh, really in, in our minds as players, it wasn't that important. It was more important to the Queenslanders and it still probably is than, than New South Wales players. So I actually pulled out of the, the first game of... Um, the state of origin. Peter Wynn took my spot, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, but, but then you know, then it became what it is, and you know, I, pl- I only played three games, and then it said it happened, and that you know that you know I, I never, I don't think anyone ever wants to really hurt anyone badly on a football no. field, and that was, and uh, you know, it's not something that I thought about and wanted to do, or it's something that happened at the, in, in the spur of the moment, and. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm genuinely sorry that it happened to him, to Daryl Broman. You know, but uh, that's something that did happen, and you can't take it back. You know, it's part of part of life, and yep. um, yeah, you know, it's something that happened. So uh, yeah, I'm not, even though I'm sorry about it, there's not much I can do about it now. No, that's totally yeah. fair. That's totally fair. Have Have you guys, you and Daryl, uh, reconciled it, it, um, since? No. Then? No. Not at, not at all. Well, he actually took me to court and sued me over, you know, which I settled out of court because I, you know, I, my head and I said I would be beaten in court. So um, I settled out of court. But I mean, I, um, you know, I, no, we haven't basically spoken since that that, that that incident happened at all. No. Oh wow, well, I'm I'm sorry for that. Um... Oh, that's life. It's a uh, mate. You know, he's got his life to get on with, and I've got mine. So. Yep. Well, now what happened happened, and it's uh, it's part of history, probably, isn't it? Yes, yeah, that's, mm. that's exactly mm. how it is. Um, mm. uh, after your time with Manly and the and um, sorry, the Fibros, which is Western Suburbs, you went over to Warrington. What was it like playing in an, in a totally different country? Unbelievable! It was the best experience. I wish I went there when I was eighteen years of age. I, I really enjoyed my football in England. Um, I enjoyed the club. I enjoyed the people and the lifestyle. I um I had a great time. I had uh, five years with Warrington, um, and then could have gone back and coached them if I wanted to, but I wasn't really that keen on coaching a football team. I probably could have played for another year or two if I really wanted to, but I uh, 
um, I had sort of business interests back in, in Australia, so I came home. But, but the people, the game, um, the club, and everything, and, and, and my wife enjoyed it, and children enjoyed it. Because, uh, my kids went to school there for a couple of years, you know, so... It was, a, it was a great experience and something that I would uh, say to anyone, if you get the opportunity, have a go at it because it's a, it's a great place and a great, great uh, lifestyle. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair enough. Um, now, uh, getting some fun questions. What is your current beer of choice if you drink? My current beer of choice? Well, I've been a, a Kiwi for uh, uh, 25 years. <laughs> so, I, um, I, I drink for a skull, actually, believe it or not. If I do have a beer, I don't, I'm not a big beer drinker, but if I do have a beer, 99% of the time, I drink for a skull. Oh, nice, mm. nice. Um, and what would be the best way that you like your steak cooked? Uh, definitely medium. Yep. A tea bone medium is probably my favourite cut of meat, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, a tea bone with uh, medium with a bit of salad, yeah, I love it. Oh, honestly, mm. yeah. Oh, what type of salad would do you, do you want with it? Oh, I just have a mixed salad. Just a little, you know, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, onion, a bit of cheese, you know. Yeah, yeah love, a, it, love a salad all... with my steak. Yep. Yeah, nice, yep. nice. Nothing better on a summer's day than a steak and some salad. Um, if you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? A <laughs> superpower? Oh, I don't know. Um, if I had a superpower, uh, I don't know, probably be strength. I don't know, you know, the Superman. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know, you know, it's, it's something that I've never really thought about. But um, yeah, I um, and why I don't know to, to just be handy, I suppose. You know, when you want to do things that you you wanted to do. Yeah. Um, mm. No, that's totally fair. Um, and I've got two more topics. Uh, or questions, what do you want to say is, uh, first of all, we've got a question from our sponsor, Sky Spark Electrical, and they ask, what advice would you give to your younger self, as in pre-rugby league, knowing what you know now to go through life? Um, definitely take each day as it comes, you know, and cherish the opportunities that you get. You know, I think, as I said, when you're achieving some things, uh, and, and, you know, um, some things that you do achieve in life, it doesn't mean as much when you're doing it as later on, you know. Um, I think that's one thing. Just just seize the moment and, and realise what you are doing, you know. Um, and always try to do it in the best of your ability. You know, I, I, I probably look back at myself and, and say oh, I was fairly lazy, lazy as a, as a footballer, as a trainer, you know, and uh, which as I got older, you suddenly start to realise that um, you got to train harder, and you got to do, and you and you'd start to enjoy it. But I've often, I remember, I spoke to Phil Blake one day. I think Phil Blake was one of the had more ability than any young bloke I'd ever seen. You know, when he came into football in Sydney, and and I said to Phil, "You're really wasting your whole career, you know, because he he, he he played when he wanted to. You know, he just sort of done what he wanted to when he wanted to." And I said, you shouldn't put more effort into your game. And I'll never forget Phil come back about 10 years later and said, I shouldn't take a notice of what you said, you know. And I said, I oh, know, you know, you do regret things when you get older. You know, I, I could have think, I think I could have played a lot better than I did as a kid, as a young person. And I, I wish I had it, you know. And then when you suddenly realise that you're probably a little bit too old and haven't got quite the same ability you didn't have when you were young, you know. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's totally fair. Yeah. Um, and one last question is, Oh, what was it? Um, which club, when you were playing in the NRL and over in England, would you say was the uh, most challenging for you to go up against mentally and physically? Oh, which club? Um, well, obviously, you know, when I was playing in Sydney, the, the Roosters were, were at that peak of their powers. I mean, they had about 30 in the Arsenal's playing from when I first, you know, they... Um, you know, Arthur Beetson and, uh, you know, Mark Harris and John Brass and, yep. and, uh, George Higgins and all, um, all these blokes, you know, were there, you know, it was, um, not, um, sorry, not George Higgins, um, um, Elwin the Hooker. Yep. Uh, you know, they had some very, very good players, you know, Fairfax, all them blokes. And they were, they were always a daunting chance to play against. But in saying that, at West, we always held our hand with them and, and a lot of the times beat them, you know, um, but it was that was a bit dawning. Um, England, uh, you know, Wigan are a bit like the Roosters; they buy everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was always it was always good to beat them. You know, uh, the fact that you could play against them and beat them, you know, it was always a, but it was always a, and we always played them on New Year's Day. Uh, was one of the games, so it was always a big game and a big crowd and and that in England. So um, 
yeah, it was it was always a challenge playing then as well. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, that's all I have listed, and you know, um, that I could think of. So, thank you very much for joining me. And this episode will go out on Tuesday. No worries.